exactly what you want to see. Let's run this puppy in. Score a touchdown and tie this game. Life, run for your life, touchdown on one play. Worked on this in practice. Touchdown. It's up to Kelvin Benjamin. This is all you, buddy. Kelvin Benjamin for a touchdown. Oh, he toasted his man. Holmes toasted his man. Spin move. Oh! Oh! What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Water Juice channel and welcome back to the recap and review for the Ohio State Buckeyes versus Rutgers game that happened yesterday at 3.30. Now, you know what? Let's, just, let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into it. The Buckeyes won 52-13 to and this game for the first time all season, felt like a typical Ohio State football game. Where you just have the better athletes, you just play the better football, and you just win. And you win big. That's what this game felt like. There was never a question that Rutgers was going to win this game. They were down, <clears throat> excuse me, they were down 14 to nothing within 40 seconds of the game. There was a um, Travion Henderson 40 or 50 yard touchdown or something on the second play of the game for the Buckeyes. And then there was a pick six by Denzel Burke within the first 40 seconds of play in the first quarter. So, I mean, there was never, ever a question that Rutgers was going to win this game. It was just a question of how much more were the Buckeyes going to put on this game. And they ended up putting on 52 throughout the game they didn't score in the fourth quarter because they had their third string guys out there some four string guys out there they really they really stopped in the second half they kind of just cooled off a little bit uh didn't want to didn't want to completely embarrass Rutgers because they could have put a hundred on this Rutgers team if they wanted to and they didn't and they didn't and that's okay because you don't want to get your guys hurt CJ Stroud looked really really good he did exactly he did exactly what I wanted to see from him. He threw to the tight ends, which was a rare thing to have happen. The Buckeyes rarely ever use uh, tight ends in, in games. I make the joke almost every week how I'd hate to be a, a Buckeye tight end because you barely ever get used as a, as a receiving back or as a receiving threat. You're always a blocker. And so they actually used Jeremy Ruckert. He had, uh, how many catches did he have? He had four catches for 40 yards. Uh, in like the first, I think the, all those catches came in like the first quarter, or maybe the first half. Uh, so uh, Jeremy Rucker got used a little bit. C.J. Stroud actually ran the football a couple of times, which was a pleasing sight to see. He ran it twice. He didn't go very far when he ran the football. He didn't need to. Just the fact that he ran the football shows me, and it shows defenses, opposing defenses, that he's a threat. Now, how much of a threat? How much are they going to have to concern themselves with C.J. Stroud running the football? Probably not that much, but at least having that little bit in the back of your head where, oh, C.J. could actually run and take off for a first down here. That is good. That's what every good team needs. That's what every good championship contending team needs to have is a threat at quarterback to be able to throw the ball deep or run the football and get that first down because it makes the defense have to guard way too many things that they can't end up guarding and then something's eventually going to be open. So it was actually good to see this Buckeye offense look like a traditional Buckeye offense. And it was good to see them for the first time this season actually look comfortable in a game. Now, I get it. It's against Rutgers, but they are a an improved team from what they've been in past iterations. They gave Michigan a game. What that says about Michigan, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see because if Ohio State steamrolls Rutgers and then the previous week Rutgers gives Michigan a, a game, how good is Michigan? I don't know. They seem to have found something because they just won. They won yesterday as well. So they seem to have done something right, but I guess they just had an off day against against Rutgers and Ohio State didn't. Um, so it's it's too early to tell how good Michigan's going to be. It's still er too early to tell how good Ohio State's going to be because it's against Rutgers. Their defense was decent, but definitely not yesterday. 
Um, C.J. Stroud literally did whatever he wanted. He had 330 yards passing, five touchdowns, no interceptions, no overthrown balls, rarely an incompletion. I think he had he had 17 of 23 on his completion, so rarely an incompletion. C.J. Stroud looked amazing. He His shoulder seems to be fully healed. Maybe that was the problem that C.J. was having. Maybe he was he was struggling to uh, to hit his targets because that shoulder was just so hurt that he needed to have a rest week to be able to to put ice on it, let it rest, and then go out there and sling it around, which is what he did this week. So I don't know if it was a hundred percent the shoulder, if maybe it was fifty fifty between the shoulder and just some nerves of your first college football season as the starter of a big time program like Ohio State and. Uh, having your your bell rocked by Oregon. So I don't know. It might have been a mixture of those, a combination of both of those. Uh, but he did not have any problems yesterday. He dominated five touchdowns, two to, to Chris Olave, which puts him, I think, third or tied for third on the all-time Ohio State Buckeye touchdown list uh, for receivers. So that's awesome. If he keeps getting the ball targeted to him, he could break that by the end of the season. I think David Boston has it at 34. So... We could be seeing Chris Olave get the, the record by the end of the season, depending on how good this offense becomes. And this defense, it was against a Rutgers offense that looked shaky. Uh, Noah Vedral was the quarterback of the Rutgers offense, and he threw three interceptions, one for a pick six. I mentioned earlier the Denzel Burke interception. Uh, and he didn't really look comfortable at all. This defensive line is one of the best in the league, or in the league, in the country. And they proved it again yesterday. Uh, these linebackers looked a little bit better. They looked more alive than they have in the past couple of weeks. The corners got beat a little bit. There was a huge explosive play early in the game in the first quarter by, what's his name, Krutschik? Krutschank, I think is his name. I have it down here. Aaron Krutschank, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But uh, he did have an explosive like 70-yard touchdown catch from uh, Vedral early in the in the first quarter, uh, but that was really the only explosive thing that happened because this defense once that happened they locked up they they played man to man they played some good zone they 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 locked down the middle of the field and this defense line did what they do best which is rush the passer and and get pressure on the quarterback and sack the quarterback cause fumbles cause incomplete passes cause rush throws this defense line did what they do best and when they're doing what they do best this defense is pretty good. But they just haven't been able to do that the first month or so of the season. And it's good to see back-to-back -back weeks of 50-plus point games against, yes, very, very inferior competition. But you just have to play who's in front of you. And the Buckeyes have looked more confident in these, next, these last two weeks. They're starting to build their confidence up for more and more intense games. Because we got Maryland coming up. We got Michigan State coming up. Penn State. Uh, Michigan on the 27th of November. So you've got some more intense competition ahead of you. So it's good that you're building this confidence right now because later in the season, that defense is going to be tested more so along the lines of the Oregon game than against an Akron or a, a, a Rutgers or even a Tulsa who put up like 500 plus yards of, of offense against them. So it was good to see Denzel Burke is a stud. He's a true freshman. Uh, he looked amazing. In that game, covering the ball, he had the inter the pick six. I like I mentioned, um, Travion Henderson. What what can you say, man? Travion Henderson. He didn't play much in this game because he didn't have to. Uh, he didn't have to. He had that forty plus yard run for a touchdown in the first half or in the first quarter, and then really didn't do much after that because I think he got nicked up a little bit. Uh, so he got he got taken out of the game. I don't I don't think it's severe. I think Ryan Day said it was not a problem. He just didn't want it to escalate into a problem. So Travion. <laughs> What can you say really about him? He's he's a stud. He is if there's any if there's a definition for demon time, Travion Henderson is the picture next to demon time in the dictionary because he it, there's no better freshman running back in the country than Travion Henderson. And that's not just my opinion, that is just facts. Travion Henderson is so elusive, so explosive, so dynamic, so hard to tackle he even got his shoe taken off in like the first quarter by a, a tackler and still stayed up and got a couple extra yards before running out of bounds so there's not really much you can do to stop this kid 
He is amazing. He's becoming one of my favorite players of all time at Ohio State and quickly becoming one of the best players in Ohio State recent history. So Travion Henderson, I don't know what else to really say about him. He's just, he's that guy. He, he is that guy. So I don't know what we would do without him. Um, as for the other running backs, Master Teague ran really well in the time that he got. Uh, Mar Marcus Crowley actually played really well in the time that he got this couple snaps that he had. Uh, he looked really solid. He got a couple big yard gains and, and looked pretty good. So this running back room is so heavily packed with uh, Henderson and Mayan Williams, who didn't even play yesterday because I think he was banged up. And then Master Teague and Crowley. I mean, four stud running backs that you have in this running back room that all can that, that can hit the home run whenever you want. Uh, it's, it's crazy. It's a good problem to have. Obviously, this quarterback room is very uh, compact, but I think C.J. Stroud with this game uh, has proven that he, at least for the future, for the foreseeable future, uh, is the guy to go forward, which I never really had a question about, especially in the Akron game. Kyle McCord really didn't look that good. I mean, he looked all right, but uh, he didn't really look like world beater or anything. And CJ hasn't looked like that either, but I feel confident in CJ's skills. I think Ryan Day picked the right guy from the start. Um, McCord actually got into this game, didn't look too good, uh, but he only had like three snaps, I think, or, sorry, or three throws. So... And so you can't really take too much from that. But CJ looks like the guy for the future. And I'm very excited about that because I think he's going to be a stud. He just has to prove it. So the Buckeyes win 52-13. to It'll be interesting to see where they get put in the AP. Uh, I'm expecting. I haven't seen it yet. It's probably out by now. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm expecting them to move up maybe to 9 or 8 even. Um, so I'm hoping that that they do move back into the top 10 because I feel like they do to deserve it. Um, but it's, it's good. 4-1, and 2-0 and oh in the conference. You got Maryland next Saturday at noon. I will have my uh, pregame up at 11 on Saturday, so make sure you guys stick around for that. And obviously tomorrow's video is the recap of the biggest game of the day, the Patriots and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And don't forget, don't you forget this video is actually going to go up earlier because we actually i might spread it out to where this game goes up this video goes up at noon and then we've got a special patriots tampa bay buccaneers pregame probably going to go up around 3 or 3 30 so make sure you guys stick around for that as well double uploads before the uh the six o'clock video so we got three uploads today are you guys hyped i hope you guys are i rarely do three uploads because it's just a lot of content to make so uh, i already do two uploads a day so it's hard to do three but double uploads and triple uploads that's what i got for you guys on today's sunday football day i am excited for this game tonight against uh patriots and buccaneers i'm very terrified but we'll get into that in the in the actual video Buckeyes win 52 to 13. They got Maryland next Saturday. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to smash that like button and notification bell and the subscription button as well. Join the Juice Club and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.